Resto Mods. Refresh your newsfeed and another pops up. Everyone seems to be at it. Soon there'll be at least one souped up, super expensive interpretation of all of our most loved marks, with companies that build them using words such as reimagined and evolution. Singer and Gunther have claimed the Porsche 911, Alpha Holics the Alfa Romeo Giulia, and Eagle the E Type Jaguar. Now, ProDrive are offering their P25, and even Volvo isn't safe. It's the equivalent of a land grab for the most cherished names in automotive. And now we have this, the Healy by Caton, a car that breathes life back into the most British of sports car brands, the Austin Healy. Caton is a brand backed by a company called Envisage, who say they stand for the best in British coach building. The Healy by Caton being a showcase, a calling card if you will, for who they are and what they are about. The Caton is based on one of the earliest and prettiest of the Healy designs, the 104. An original car was then sourced and 3D scanned to ensure as much of its proportions remained in the build of the Caton. The Healy's of old were all handmade, so you'd expect to see panel gaps here and there, but not on the Caton. Everything is millimetre perfect. It combines all the elements you love of the classic, the iconic grille, the uninterrupted swooping lines, no door handles on the bodywork, and beautiful wire wheels. But then under the aluminium shell, it's 2022 and not 1950s engineering. I love the way it looks, but I look at it in the same way that I might look at someone who's just had Botox. It's a face you know, it's a familiar look, but with everything just tightened up a little bit more, including those panel gaps. As with all reimagined specials, it's lighter, faster and tighter than the Austin Healey. But crucially, the heart of this car, the engine, comes from a four-cylinder block based on an original 104 that's been sympathetically overhauled by well-known Healey specialist JME Healey's. The upgrades that JME have introduced show us that given today's materials, what this engine could have been capable of when it was first built. The engine has been stripped down, lightened, balanced and refurbished to zero miles. The block has been bored out to 2,954 cc and then it's been uprated with a full steel crankshaft, upgraded bearing shells, high compression pistons and a performance camshaft. It also gets larger twin H6 carburettors. The result is an engine that now produces 180 brake horsepower. And that might not sound like a lot, but then you consider that this thing weighs just 920 kilograms. And what that equates to is a power to weight ratio of 195 brake horsepower per ton, which to give a comparison is more than an S1 Elise. And that's a quick car, even by today's standards. So it not only feels like a fast car, it is a fast car. And it's a raw experience because you're exposed to all these elements. Wind rushing past your face, that exhaust which sits right down by the side of your hip, and that gorgeous engine note when you start to sort of really crank things up. You've also got unassisted steering, so all the great feels from a classic car, but then you've got the underpinnings of modern engineering. It feels direct, it's light, but you've still got the weight in the steering wheel. And crucially, you're not being buffeted around mercilessly like in a classic car. This is soaking up the bumps and allowing you to push on. Some of the older Heelys have quite a lot of play in the pedals and you can find just the smallest of applications mean that your revs are flying up. But no, with this, nicely weighted, very assertive on the, on the throttle. And it responds perfectly. Whilst the exterior of the car is almost identical to a 104, there are 
a few sort of subtle changes. The grille, for example, is much bigger. There's no Lucas headlights at the front. There's LED lamps instead. Another practical upgrade for today's world. And then the interior is a huge step forward, although these are still pretty spartan. You've got your speedometer and rev counter, and then your indicators are here on the steering wheel. But what they've managed to do is create much more space. There's more legroom for a start. The steering wheel is slightly smaller, so those longer legged individuals can actually now thread themselves in with ease and then when they're driving the bottom of the wheels not scraping along their legs as they go. Caton will even move the pedal box forwards or backwards to your specifications so you get the perfect driving position. The original cars were and still are more characterful but of course they're less reliable as well. So has this lost that spark? Well, it depends who you ask, really, because if you're the sort of person that wants to go on that classic journey, can tolerate all the foibles, then go and get yourself an original Healy 104. But if you want reliability, safety, performance, and an engine, that demonstrates what that four cylinder can really do. Well, then you want a Caton. I'm glad it's here, but the question is why? Why did the parent company of Caton envisage? build this car. The cynics amongst us will say profit, but when you consider how much has gone into this car and that they're only building 25, there are much quicker and simpler ways to make a fast buck. So it's not that. Caton say they want to modernise, re-engineer and improve icons of the past. And if you're ever lucky enough to see or experience one of the 25, you too will understand that this is not just some fanciful folly. This is an exclusive club. Being built in so few numbers and to the customer's exact specification means the question of price is a tricky one to get answered. And not one I'd worry too much about though, as I expect most have already been sold. So where does that leave you and I? Because let's face it, most of these resto mods, reimagined, rebirthed cars are eye-wateringly expensive. And I can't remember the last time I saw one out here on the roads. So whilst I absolutely get what Caton have done, I love it. I just hope that there's something for the enthusiasts down the line, not just the top 1%, so that everybody can feel the magic, everybody can experience what these cars are like and ultimately just the sheer joy of driving we need to get back to that so I for one I'm looking forward to seeing what Kate can do next because if this is just the beginning we're in for a real treat but seeing as I find myself Amongst those lucky few today, I'm going to make every last moment of this drive count in this magnificent little sports car.